It is perhaps the greatest humanitarian crisis facing Asia today. Just what to do about the boat people, migrants, human trafficking, as today's conversation taking place in Asia now. I have previously spoken about the Asian migrant crisis and the plight of those who are commonly referred to as the boat people. Towards the end of May, regional leaders met to try and get a handle on the situation. With me now on the phone is Jonah Blank, senior political scientist with the Rand Corporation to try and make sense of it all. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. Now, before we get too deep into this very serious topic, I wanted to get your opinion on this. We've used terms Rohingya, Muslim, boat people, migrants, Bangladeshis. Are these truly accurate labels, or are we doing a disservice to the people involved in this horrific crisis? Well, some are more accurate than others. The people who are taking to the, to the oceans are, by definition, boat people. However, there are a lot of different uh, causes that are driving them, and for most of them, they are legitimate refugees, in my opinion. What should one call them? Well, the government of Myanmar wants to call them Bangladeshis or Bengalis. That's not an accurate depiction of the people who actually are citizens of Myanmar and who have lived there for generations. So... Some of these people may well be coming from Bangladesh, but the majority of them are Rohingyas, and they appear to be coming from Myanmar. This humanitarian crisis, for lack of a better word, is huge. And I want to ask you, does anyone out there have a true and clear picture to its extent? Well, just this year, we've already seen many thousands. In uh, Indonesia and Malaysia alone, uh, we've seen 4,000 migrants just in the past few months. In, since the year has started, by some estimates, there have been 8,000. These are much larger numbers than we have seen in past years. And the numbers appear to be growing. So this is a crisis that is getting worse rather than getting better. Now, at the end of May, you know, the leaders, the regional leaders got together to try and get a handle on the situation and devise a remedy. And unfortunately, nothing was really achieved aside from the fact that, yes, we do need to continue to discuss this and get a handle on things. Um, everyone recognizes something absolutely needs to be done. But what is holding back action and actually accomplishing this? Well, the biggest reason for a lack of action is in Myanmar itself. For the immediate future, the, in, the countries in the region and the countries around the world need to step up and do more. Uh, the rich countries should be helping the frontline countries, particularly Myanmar and Indonesia, to foot the bill for this uh, rather intensive effort. And the United States has actually stepped up to the plate with both funding and with surveillance uh, flights to find refugees who are in danger of dying on the sea. We need to have more help from the other rich nations, both those in the re region, like Australia, Japan, South Korea, China, and those further afield. Uh, this really is a global crisis rather than just a regional one. But the long-term solution really lies in Myanmar. As long as the government of Myanmar refuses to acknowledge any sort of responsibility for its own citizens and for the fact that it is driving its citizens to risk their lives on the ocean, then we're just going to have a problem that gets worse and worse. Well, yes, and this is a problem that's been going on for years and years. And you, you mentioned Myanmar, and during that meeting, Myanmar said, don't look at us. The problem is not ours. Don't blame us. I mean, that is a, going to require a fundamental shift in terms of attitude. Is there any inkling that that change is going to occur? I think it has to. Whether it will or not is another question. Myanmar has refused to treat these members of its own uh, nation as true citizens. It calls them Bengalis. It, uh, it treats their ethnicity as a, as a mark of citizenship, which is not the way things work in the 21st century. 
And if Myanmar is serious about wanting to rejoin the community of nations after essentially cutting itself off from the entire world for three decades, even perhaps much longer if you go back to 1962, if it really wants to keep this reform movement going and keep the investment that is from the rest of the world that's fueling it going, then it has got to abide by international norms of how it treats its own citizens. All right, let's try to look forward and, and look at possible solutions. In your opinion, if we take a look at short-term, immediate things that need to take place, uh, what could be done to, I guess, put it into the humanitarian crisis that we're currently seeing? Well, the frontline states, particularly Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand, have to accept the refugees that are uh, that are coming to their shores. That's their obligation under international law, and it's the the only moral outcome. You don't turn people away who are in who are at risk of uh, of dying. However, the rest of the world has to step up and help shoulder the the burden of the cost. Now, these are three nations that are not particularly wealthy, and the nations that do have more resources the United States, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, uh, and further afield in Europe, have to supply funding and resources to help these frontline nations do this. That's the short-term answer. The long-term answer is to address why these people are risking everything in a tremendously uh, desperate uh, flight from their own country. And that's where Myanmar really has to be, uh, be prodded to take the right course. Who can do the prodding? To some extent, the same rich nations that are now eager to engage with Myanmar, but more particularly ASEAN, uh, Myanmar's uh, neighbors within Southeast Asia. ASEAN has been very reluctant uh, traditionally to interfere in the affairs of any of its member nations. However, this really will be a test of whether ASEAN has a legitimate purpose in the 21st century. Well, you mentioned these these longer term issues that need to be addressed to bring everything home. Uh, one of the things that has come out to this is, I, I guess, some allegations that at least in Thailand there has been some corruption that kind of fueled the fire of some of these camps. Is there enough pressure to truly rein that in to make a difference? Well, corruption is uh, a uh, a cancer in. Uh, in Myanmar, in Thailand, and a lot of other countries. The idea that uh, we're going to have uh, absolutely clean administration in any of the frontline nations is probably pretty remote. I think the, uh, the more important thing is, uh, is just very simple. What is the, what is the actual behavior? Are refugees being turned away? Yes, no. Are they being treated uh, with human dignity? Are they being given shelter? Are they being given food? Are they given, being given medical attention? Yes, no. That's the immediate question. The longer term question is what can be done to persuade Myanmar to grant full citizen rights to the Rohingya population? Jonah Blank is a senior political scientist with the RAND Corporation. Thank you so much for your time this week. Thank you very much. Now, this, of course, is a very complicated issue, and there really is no simple solution. But my question for you is this. Do you believe these governments can actually work together to put an end to this crisis? Asia Now features extended content originally broadcast as part of the Asian News Weekly Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends, and if you haven't, subscribe. Subscribing is free, and when you do, the next episode is delivered automatically to you. You can subscribe on our website, asiannewsweekly.net, or in your favorite podcast application. You'll be able to keep up with more news from the region by following Asian News Weekly on Facebook or Twitter, and if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, be sure to drop us a line at podcast at asiannewsweekly.net. Thank you so much for listening today, and until next time, remember to be true to yourself and to always be awesome.